This is one of Russ Anderson's brief courses in RV construction. But for the GS spec, we know we have to have things that are tough, and we're going to discuss one of the construction aspects that's very important to us, and that's sidewall construction in terms of toughness. Over the years, we've used various materials to make sidewalls in an RV. We know that bricks are too heavy, steel's a little heavy, and we've come up with perhaps aluminum skin. Uh, aluminum skin is very easy for us to work with, and uh, as a backing to fasten it to, we very often use wood. However, one of the materials that we've used very, very successfully over, say, the last 15 years has been fiberglass. And the main reason for fiberglass, it is really, really tough and very resilient to tree branches striking it, hail damage. I've got some hail here in my bucket. I'm going to throw some hail at this sidewall, which is fiberglass, and we're going to see how it reacts. This hail came right out of my refrigerator this morning. Hail! Okay. No sign of hail strikes. So that's a big one, especially for my customers from Texas, Kansas, or think they might be in Texas or Kansas. Fiberglass has some good points and bad points. One of them is not very rigid. It's just a floppy, flexible plastic sheet. So if we're going to stand it up on the sidewall of an RV, the fiberglass has to be glued to something. And traditionally, then, we've glued it to a piece of paneling. On the Americana, we, in fact, glue it to a piece of mahogany paneling. And the reason mahogany is little things don't grow in it. As you know, furniture lasts for years and years and years if it's made out of mahogany because it doesn't attract mildew or dry rot. We're going to glue the fiberglass to the, pa the uh, mahogany uh, paneling or plywood. We used to use a product called contact cement. And contact cement worked really good until the sun hit it. And when the sun hit it, we would get a phenomenon known in our industry as delamination. And I think most of us who have been in this business for a while have seen RVs and campgrounds or going down the highway and there's a big bubble on the side or a big bubble around the door, or a bubble around the window. Well, where this bubble came from is there's something called linear expansion. A lot of these things we learned in seventh grade science, but we forgot. So let's recall seventh grade science. Linear expansion. If you heat something, it tends to expand. Well, if you heat fiberglass, it wants to expand. And if it can't go left and it can't go right, it will come out this way. So that's linear expansion. And it would actually break the bond of the, fiber, of the glue holding it to the coach. Now, in recent years, we've come up with another bonding process called urethane cement. And with urethane cement, it is not uh, affected by the sun's heat the way our old bonding agents used to be. And real fine cement is hot urethane cement. So our current process we use is a hot process. And that process of construction takes very, very expensive tooling. Tooling that costs about a half a million dollars to three quarters of a million dollars. Well, one of the ways that we've done our sidewall construction by bonding is to create something very similar to a surfboard. Surfboards are very rigid structures, lightweight structures. This is a surfboard. We can get up here and jump up and down. But all that is is a piece of foam with fiberglass laminated on one side and fiberglass laminated on the other. Just a simple sandwich construction with no frame. Foam, okay? The foam that we use, in fact, is the same foam that we use in a coffee cup. This is just about, oh, an eighth of an inch thick, and yet I can put scalding hot coffee in this cup and not burn myself. So if we used in our sidewall this type of foam, only in our case we'll use an inch and a half of it it is super insulation, okay? We have to use super insulation because we, in this case, have used a framework in connect connection with the bonded structure that's made out of aluminum. The reason we use aluminum is lightweight, yes, but really we're only maybe 200 pounds lighter in a coach like this making it out of aluminum than if we use, say, wood. Problems that we've had with wood, although we might prefer it because it costs certainly less than aluminum, is that it's not very straight. And one of the tricks is after we get one of these walls laminated and put together, we want it to be straight. So when you look at it, you say, oh yes, that's beautiful. So we can't use wood. It doesn't stay straight. 
steel is a little heavy and we like to have a frame in here to take and screw things to. In other words, the door needs to be screwed to the frame, the compartment door screwed to the frame, the windows and so on. So we do need a framework in our structure. Uh, in fact, this uh, surfboard has no framework and once the glue has set, it's extremely strong and rigid. This little puppy really doesn't need a framework to be strong and rigid, it just needs the framework to screw in too. So here's an example of the sidewall construction that we use. We have fiberglass skin on the outside, mahogany plywood right here. Then we take and bond that with hot urethane cement uh, to the foam insulation. There's an inch and a half of it, the same kind we use in there, our coffee cup. This has some of the aluminum frame sections in it. And on the inside then is our inside sidewall paneling. This has become a, this is a very lightweight, rigid structure. It takes a lot of expensive tooling to make it. And now to see how we make this little guy and why it's so important to us to use the proper construction techniques and the proper tooling, we're going to go off to Amish country in Indiana and look at our three quarters of a million dollars worth of factory and tooling to do this process. We are not able to do this at our factories out here in the West. Oh, hey.